Joining us now is ESPN's Kimberly Martin, and we have the pleasure of having her in U.S. Bank Stadium this Saturday for the Vikings-Giants game, the winter whiteout. It's very fitting, Kimberly, that the literal conditions right now is a winter whiteout in Minnesota for the game. Yeah, no, I joked with the Giants already, like, uh, pray that my plane gets there. Uh, and there, everybody's excited. Snow games are cool. I'm glad, though, that we are inside a dome. It's the only issue is just getting to Minnesota and we can get this thing going. Yeah, make sure you bring a couple of extra layers. Again, I, I walk to the stadium every day saying, thank God we play in a dome. <laughs> Wonderful. It's going to be a really exciting game because both mm -hmm. these teams have so much to play for despite – the Vikings just pulling off the most epic comeback in NFL history and clinching their NFC North division. They now have to fight to keep that number two seed alive. And then they get the Giants who are fighting for a wild card berth. Uh, what do you make of this matchup? Like, how do you think this is going to shake out? Well, that's the beauty of this team because we have no idea what is going to happen. Because if you're watching the first half of that Vikings Colts game, like I was, you're, you're thinking, okay, are the Vikings really as good as their record? What's going on? What's happening? And then all of a sudden that epic comeback. And then you watch a Giants team that is similar from the standpoint of you can never technically count them out. Like both of these teams win a lot of one score games, tight games in the fourth quarter. I This will now be the third Vikings game I've covered, and it's going to be the third Giants game I've covered. And both teams have been 2-0 and when I cover them. So this is a very exciting game for me. Um, I just think you just never know. Like, the obviously, the Vikings have a much better roster. Like, you got, the Vikings have uh, impact players everywhere. The Giants, you know exactly what they're going to do run the ball with Saquon and he is dynamic in his own right. So it really comes down to two teams that sometimes start slow, but close, know how to close out. So I think it's a little tough to predict, but that makes it all the more exciting. Yeah. I do remember running into you at the Buffalo game, which was, yes. We uh, thought that was going to be the game of the season. Yes. <laughs> so you, you see that Vikings team that pulled that off. You you're watching at halftime, obviously not knowing what was about to happen, but what, how would you compare the way that the Vikings have, uh, have played since that Buffalo game in coming into this one? Well, I was going to say they played well. And then the Colts game happens and you're thinking, wait, this is not the Vikings team that I'm used to seeing. This is crazy. And after the, I covered the Vikings in Washington, you know, the Washington commanders win. Um, and then the following week in Buffalo, that was an epic, epic game. Each time I've talked to Justin Jefferson on the field post game, and I look at him and I say, Justin, what is going on? Last week, you told me we've got to start fast. We've got to be able to, um, you know, jump out to leads and, and, and bring that energy from quarter number one, sustain it. Then the next week, Justin, what's going on? It's the same thing. But, and even, I spoke to him a few days ago and it's the same thing. What's kind of wild though, is that when you listen to Dalvin Cook and you listen to Justin Jefferson, all these leaders on the team, they keep saying, we have to put four quarters together. Mm -hmm. The Vikings are 11 and three and still have not played a full four quarter game where they feel like from start to finish, you see everything we can do. That has to excite them internally. Like the confidence in that is we just came back from 33 points down. We can withstand absolutely anything now. And I think while the outside world was looking at it like, oh, are they really that good? Internally, that game is proof that they can weather any storm figuratively, literally. They can they can handle whatever because they have the leaders in that locker room. Patrick Peterson in that locker room halftime says, all we need is five touchdowns, guys. Yeah. I, I said to Justin, that sounds like a lot of touchdowns, doesn't it? He said, yeah, it does. But when you look at that roster, more than capable of pulling it off than they did. Yeah, you said you spoke to Justin. Obviously, mm -hmm. he is trying to chase Ugh. that 2,000-yard record. He's only 10 games away from breaking Randy Moss's franchise, or 10 yards away yes. from breaking Randy Moss's franchise record with it, which is just insane for single-season yards, receiving yards. Uh, what, what was your biggest takeaway in your conversation with that guy? Well, I told him point blank. I was like, "What? you're a freak. You're an alien. You are a legit alien. And he is, he is just dynamic. And even Wink Martindale, the Giants defensive coordinator said this week, I told our defense, Justin Jefferson is a top two receiver and he's not two. 
And Justin obviously has that confidence. What strikes me about Justin and Kirk in this offense is it doesn't matter how you play Justin Jefferson at all. You could single cover him. You could have your number two corner on him, have a safety over top of his help. You could roll coverage his way. He will catch everything. And the Giants know that. The Giants come into this understanding they are going to throw the ball. The Vikings are going to throw the ball to him a lot. We just have to minimize the damage, minimize the yards after catch. Because even that Buffalo game, that was a game where, I mean, you just thought this kid, it, it was further proof. We already knew it. But it's further proof of how special he is and that you really can't do anything but just limit the damage. It's also been a bit of a special year for the Giants. It has turned around for them, especially yeah. under first-year head coach Brian Dayball. What is their mindset that you're hearing around their facility this week heading into this game where they know they've got so much, they've got their playoff uh, hopes on the line? Yeah, you know what's great about the Giants? They have just as much confidence as the Vikings, even though their records are vastly different and the rosters look vastly different. What I love about Brian Dable is, and even their first, the first year GM, uh, Joe Shane, they've come in and sort of reshaped how that building thinks, like that locker room. It's, it's not, every game, it sounds silly and corny coach speak, but every game is important. So last week I covered Giants Sunday Night Football, Giants Washington, right? The commanders came into it like, we understand this is a mini playoff game. Giants came into it saying, this is the next game on our schedule. It's important, just like the last one, just like the next one. And they understood that even if we lose, we still control our destiny. And it is that steady, steady mindset where they have a high confidence, even when they lose. That building, people are walking around with their heads down. They are very confident in Saquon and the coaching. They have excellent coaches. Coaches are a reason why they've won a lot of their games as well. So the Giants feel like we have something to prove Saquon. I talked to him before the Sunday night football game. He said, I'm getting back to being me. I'm trying to have fun. I know I've proven my worth. I want to dance when I'm scoring. I want to have all that energy, bring it onto the field. So it's going to be really great to see these teams because despite how they've gotten to this point, they both understand important game. We have bigger aspirations and we have all the internal confidence in here. You know, I talked to Dalvin Tomlinson and Jordan Hicks this week, and they know that Saquon Barkley is going yeah. to be this tough matchup for them. But they're a team that's not a lot of 100 plus yard rusher this season. So I want to ask you this final question. The Vikings win the game if they. The Vikings win this game if they honestly, if they stop Saquon from being Saquon last week against Washington. It was 11-yard run, 10-yard run, 7-yard run. There's one drive where he is just taking them. You know it's coming. You know it's Saquon, and yet he's still doing it. If they can stop him, because after that, you know, you try to make teams one-dimensional. He's special, but if you can limit what he's doing, mm -hmm. and then they got to start fast. Let's be honest. Justin Jefferson knows it. Got to start fast from jump. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. Well, you mentioned it a little earlier, but these two teams are very comfortable in close games. They're literally ranked first and second in close games yep. in the league. So I have a feeling we're going to have another good one on our hands. Thank you so much to Kimberly Martin from ESPN for joining us. Can't wait for you to get here. Thank you. Pray, pray, please get in on time. I'm excited. Have a safe flight. Have a safe <laughs> flight. You.